Let's take a look at some information and charts on MakerDAO for Brave New Coin. Now, the MakerDAO supports a collateralized debt position program, which creates the stablecoin DAI, often seen as uh, DAI USD, DAI USDC. You'll see various stablecoins against fiat or against other stablecoins at this point. But it was originally intended to be a stablecoin, initially single collateral, which led to some stable issues issues keeping the die stable and has since gone to multi-collateral and it's sort of morphed into a system where an increasing percentage is actually made up of USDC. So is there some risk baked in there with USDC? Is, is it a centralized versus decentralized conversation where we tried to make this decentralized thing, we go multi-collateral, it includes USDC, which is a centralized entity. You know, that's that's an interesting conversation <laughs> because it certainly didn't start off as a uh, stablecoin that includes other stablecoins, but here we are. So through Oasis.app or various other methods, you're able to manage these uh, positions if you're looking to create these CDP type products to mint die for yourself. Now, it's important with stablecoins to look at total supply of everything Initially, Tether was the lone rodeo in town. And then Psy here, which is the single collateral system for Maker. And that has quickly ballooned into a variety of stable coins, most of which are still Tether. At the top there with $60 billion between Tron and ETH, $22 billion on USDC, and $4.6 billion in the purple down there on DAI. So the DAI supply continues to increase along with everything else. This isn't really in a vacuum here. Now the USDC supply is probably increasing at the fastest rate. Not anything specific to comment on there other than it's just a bullish environment on these products currently before U.S. regulations clamp down on them more so than they already have in some way, shape, or form. Maker also has a governance protocol, which is really what the token itself is used for. And in general, it's hard for me to be bullish on governance tokens on anything. Maybe they make the most sense on things like DEXs and stablecoins, where you are adding or subtracting from the debt ceiling, talking about interest rates, savings rates, talking about liquidation ratios, all sorts of stuff, right? There's all sorts of votes that happen here that you can participate in, but for the most part, I'm guessing many of these are passed based on whether or not it makes sense for the protocol, the token, right? And that's based on who owns Maker. So you can't vote unless you own Maker. And if we look at the total die again, it's at close to 5 billion, <laughs> close to 5 billion. They have this uh, road to 10 billion die. I don't know why, some arbitrary number on this website, but Really the important thing about Maker is they also have a burning mechanism, which at that point at a protocol level, you can calculate things like a PE ratio, which is currently 20 for those of you who know that legacy term. But if we look at what makes up all of the various collaterals, you can see TUSD is in here, USDC is in here a couple times, uh, and USDC makes up a significant portion of the total 4.9 billion, you know, 2.1 plus 240 million. So, you know, it's a significant amount, right? This isn't just crypto in its purely native form here. This isn't just ETH, BTC, or Wi-Fi. Um, PAX, I think, is stablecoin as well. But to me, this adds a layer of risk. Let's say USDC has some issues with stability or regulations or something. I don't know. Um, you're going to see that trickle down to the multi-collateral die, right? Because it's included in all of this stuff. So you're going to see tremors of problems with the collateral uh, in this decentralized, in quotes, ecosystem. So it's certainly an interesting discussion to be had about how decentralized is this if we're including this amount of centralized coin uh, in the underlying in the collateral. They have a countdown here. You can see the amount of fees that are collected, uh, the burning rates. You can see where the fees are collected can see what that translates to for a year. So there's clearly a, at a protocol level based on the governance, 
a baked in uh, burning mechanism. And in general, with buybacks or burn, whatever, however you want to consider that, when anytime supply is being reduced, typically you see a reaction in price eventually, right? Now there has to be supply demand equilibrium. We have to talk about, you know, if there's too many sellers to even care about burning of maker, right? What does it matter? Um, there's not a lot of maker circulating, which is why the maker price is significant relative to a lot of other DeFi stuff. Reminds me of Wi-Fi, where there's very few total tokens, which is why the token price itself is so high relative to ETH even, right? But they continue to burn uh, Maker, and this will continue, you know, indefinitely. I'm sure they have a, a specific uh, target in mind I'm not aware of, but they're continuing to move uh, Maker out of circulation. They're continuing to try to make the DAO itself more decentralized, despite the underlying collateral containing a significant percentage of uh, centralized stable coins. If we look at this uh, similar PE ratio type of conversation for other coins, Maker's on the high end, but at least it has a PE ratio that's baked into the protocol. So for some people that I talk to about Maker, they say it's the only DeFi coin with an actual PE ratio because it's in the protocol. All this other stuff, for the most part, is based on trading volumes, not necessarily protocol fees or percentages. So that's important to keep in mind when you're looking at something like this and you're thinking, okay, Sushi Balancer, Compound, Ave, right? These look better than Maker, but if volumes dry up, if trading dries up, this gets shifted based on a 30-day rolling average pretty significantly. And it's another way fundamentally to understand, does this stuff have growth potential? Does it look overheated? Is it overbought? Is it oversold? Does it look like a value play? That sort of thing. If we compare the top three lending products, uh, Aave, Compound, and Maker, we can look at you know total loans, total borrows, total liquidations. I like to look at all that stuff. Total lending. And um, Maker is down at the bottom here at 4.7, but collectively these are pretty similar, and this will shift in regards to uh, incentives or APYs at any given time, right? Uh, it'll increase or decrease, but for the most part, all three of these have about equal um, lending and deposits. You'll see, you know, if deposits and withdrawals about equal on any given day relative to what's going on. One issue with Ave and Compound relative to Maker is that Maker has had historically fewer and fewer less liquidations. So this is the liquidation volume. And if we look at that big liquidation day on uh, May 18th, most of it was Ave and Compound at a combined 286 million, well, we'll say 300 million even, uh, with Maker at around 42 million. So the liquidation engines are less impactful for Maker for the ecosystem as a whole relative to Ave and Compound, where if this stuff starts to sell off in a big way, it's mainly due to things like Ave and Compound and not Maker. Not that Maker doesn't play a role there, obviously, but um, Maker much less so. And total share, market share between all three of them, again, in the 30s, you know, it's, it's about the same. Ave currently leading probably due to um, incentives at the moment. TVL for Maker has dropped by around 50%. You're going to see that across the board as price depreciation hits everything. Uh, borrowing volume, though, is still sitting at highs. So despite, uh, you know, TVL being down, volumes have kind of held right where they were, which to me is a bullish sign more so for DeFi than just Maker itself. But it's important to look at all this stuff after, you know, the bullish exuberance is over. Does the market care about lending and borrowing anymore? And the answer is, yeah, it looks like it does. This borrowing volume got chunked, but is slowly beginning to recover. And it didn't even get wiped out completely, right? Um, and again, that liquidation volume relative to the other stuff is minute compared to Ave and Compound. I also like the bank, you know, for this information because it'll tell me on any given day what the 24-hour liquidation volume is. And you can see that in the history here. If we look at the on-chain transaction stats for Maker, as with any governance token, I think most of these on-chain stats are pretty meaningless unless there's a big vote or unless price moves in a big way. You're not going to see a lot of on-chain activity for governance tokens. So how much of this really matters for price? You know, it's hard to say. It doesn't matter at all. 
because you don't really need to be moving. You know, if I have Maker, I don't. I just hold it. I don't need to do anything with it, right? It's not like a, a medium of exchange or anything like that. The same thing with the active addresses. The, you'll see these pop up and down relative to price, but not really anything else too specifically. And Maker's NVT is currently basically near all-time lows, which would be bullish in a vacuum. But again, NVT wasn't really built for things that don't move or need to move, right? So it's hard to even know what to take seriously here. It's good that active addresses are up, NVTs down, transactions are relatively up, average transaction values at all-time highs or near all-time highs, right? All that is good to see, but I don't think it really moves the needle price-wise in general. Here's a way to look at the stability of DAI USD over time. This is uh, a market on Kraken. There's a market on Coinbase. You could you could look at all these markets collectively, make an index, and boom, there you get your value, which is what um, things like Link or Band oracles on DeFi do. But if we just look at this chart specifically, since 2021, DAI has been increasingly stable, and my guess is this is due to an increase in collateral of centralized stable coins right so it it's it's getting kind of dishonest to say that like Dai is stable relative to eth you know well you know it's kind of stable relative to the other stable coins that are the collateral right that was the whole reason to add multi-collateral Dai in an effort to make this thing more stable because it was all over the place for a long time in 2020 um where it went up it went down eventually it came back but my guess is a lot of this is related to the uh, USDC packs and TUSD deposits and not ETH or BTC in the underlying there. If you look at the technicals for MakerUSD, um, it had this breakout in uh, January along with everything else where all of a sudden people cared about DeFi for the first time, right? In a big way. And a, lot, a lot of these charts, you know, Maker's been around for a long time relative to the other DeFi stuff. But the market finally woke up in uh, January when it broke this multi-month, multi-year range to the upside. So the biggest support right now sits right at that previous resistance, currently at around 750, 850. So if this trend is in fact over, if this does in fact reverse, there's a high possibility that this will eventually want to retest the previous breakout point. Currently, there's a decent argument for support at... 2600 based on the 200 day moving average decent support at the s1 monthly pivot at 1500 and below that it's sub a thousand right regardless of how i am how bullish i am on maker you know the chart is the chart <laughs> so if there's no support until the previous breakout point you know that's the support you could argue some support in here but with all these charts since January, they just went straight up and didn't consolidate. So there isn't really any strong supports. And you see that in volume relative to where it sat for two plus years. There just isn't strong support down there. Cloud is also telling you, be careful. It's below the cloud now. And things may start to get increasingly bearish on trend. First time it's been below the cloud since it broke out above the cloud in December 2020. Maker BTC has a similar big uh, breakout point around 06. You can see a big volume level there, monthly pivot there. So if Maker does sell off, I expect Maker BTC to retrace to that level. This would be a difficult pair to trade because, I mean, look at the volatility here. This is a three day. So this thing just goes all over the place at any given moment. And on trend, it really hasn't done much since trading began you know it's just extreme ranges all over the place and if this does sell off i like um 06 higher highs would probably be 0 0.2 you know 0 0.1 plus definitely but probably 0 0.2 and then maker eth very similar extreme volatility heavy downside if i add the 200 day moving average on the three day chart so effectively the 600 day moving average then we get a pretty decent resistance level along with uh, 1.6 ETH as far as uh, horizontal level, that if we get above both of these, you know, I like upside to 3 plus, 3.1, 3.2, something like that. So 2x from here, if we can break through this resistance. 
So I like Maker. There's some questionable issues with centralization of the collateral, but overall it's a much needed utility for the DeFi ecosystem. People are using it. And as a use case, you know, it has a burn mechanism. It has governance that's working. And amongst its competitors, it's about equally weighted. Lastly, I'll just mention the ETH BTC fund on Enzyme.Finance along with the DeFi portfolio. Maker is in the DeFi portfolio. And for both of these, you can see AUM allocation, non-custodial portfolio management. You can participate if you want by depositing ETH or USDC into the smart contract or just look to see what I'm doing on any given day. You can see Maker here with a 9% allocation. Some of the stuff I can uh, lend through yielding on various borrowing platforms, specifically Aave right now. Um, a few weeks ago, it didn't really make sense with fees. You know, if I'm getting 0.8% APY, it didn't make sense if fees were infinity to even lend that out, right? Maker, zero. <laughs> 0% on Aave right now. So that's all I have access to as far as um, these borrowing and lending protocols at the moment for this stuff. And Enzyme's continually adding more and more stuff to do with uh, these tokens in the DeFi ecosystem. But if you ever want to see what I'm doing or how I'm doing it, you can pop on over to either of these. You can see all the trades I make, the sizes, um, AUM, performance, allocation etc etc so that's all for this one like dislike comment share subscribe happy trading